Let's go. Greetings, dear IIUNs present today with us. I am Ermina Raescu, President of the Women Entrepreneurs Council, Country Director of IIU Romania. This project is for you. Who I am is an initiative by IIU Women Entrepreneur Council in partnership with IIU Student Development Council. Today's topic, parent-child relationship and strong boundaries is for open-minded adults, students who feel the need to talk and be here about your problems. Today's topic is a current topic. We always encounter problems that we may not be able maybe to discuss openly. After the presentation, we will debate the topic with the students and the teachers present today. Who am I? Who was I? Who will be? The same question we all ask ourselves every day, but no one has thought about who his reality is from the very beginning, who he wants to be and how he wants to be. I didn't do it either, maybe I just thought about it. So I can judge others for something I didn't even do it for. Many of us think that we are just simple people with a simple life and even simple fate, but it's not quite like that. Everyone is unique and lives their lives completely differently, even we don't always see it. We are subject to test every day in which we have to choose all the time. And this is how life defined us. This is just this. Shapes our future according to our choices. By choosing certain things, we realize that we are someone, we want to become someone and we fight for it. I invite you to let your attention sink into what has always been here, openly waiting to be seen by your own self. Who are you really? Are you any image that appears in your mind? Are you any sensation that appear in your mind, on your skin? Are you something that someone else said you are? Or are you rebelling against what someone else has said you are? These are some of the many paths of misidentification. All these definitions come and go, are born and die. The truth about who are you does not appear and disappear. It's a present before birth. It is present before birth, during life, and will be present after our death. To discover the truth about who you are is not only possible, but is your bright light. And towers that this discovery is not for you or that now is not the time or that you are not worthy to find out or that you are not ready, or that you already know who you are, are just tricks of the mind. It is time to investigate this high, proud and observe its validity. During this examination, there is an openness of conscience, intelligence that you represent to finally recognize ourselves. Without this power and simplicity, the question, who am I? Project the mind back to the roots of personal identification, the fundamental assumption. I am a person with quality and flaws. I am a human being with quality and flaws. We all are human beings with quality and flaws, but we can. Thank you, Sir Peyush Pandit, for this great platform, your involvement and support. Indeed, you show us every day that education has no boundaries, that we should be mentored to the young people of the next generation, that we can. Education unite us, unite our hearts, no matter in what different corner of the world we are. His vision on education is unique 
and innovative. First of all, uh, I want to uh, say that IIU means a wonderful team, beautiful people with a common purpose, that of bringing education into everyone's homes, to always find something new, innovative to surprise you. Part of IIU for the great world. And because we are talking about team here, I want to invite a great IIU. No one other, then please uh, close your microphone. Uh, no one other than our Vice Chancellor, Honorable Professor Dr. Chap General Eboria Oshiro Charles to open this project. Welcome, here. Thank you very much, my dear sister. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate all our women enterprise entrepreneur, council uh, president, our uh, Ibu ambassador, our Ibu Ameribu, Emina, for our good work. I also appreciate the International Student Development Council president for this great initiative under the support of our great and noble founder of IIU, Piyush Pandita, and our able and admirable trustee, Ma Dr. Krishni La, for all their kind gesture, for all the support they have been giving us. I keep on praying that God will come to strengthen every one of us so that we work in accordance to his standard. So the blessing of God will be permanent in our life. Thank you very much for this great opportunity. I also need to share my view concerning the topic. Shall I continue? Yes, Sir Charles, and thank you for your kind and encouraging words uh, at the launch of this project. It's an honor to have you with us. And like you said, we have great people in our team, we have a great founder, and we have a great trustee, our Dr. Roshni Nal from Australia. Now, I wait your presentation. You can share. I will be grateful also if you share with me. Like in this slide one, we can see that uh, the question before us is, who is Nora on the screen? Am I? The you, can the first, uh, you can see the first slide. You can see the first slide. I am who God sees I am. A child of God, and by the special grace of God, I am the vice chancellor of IIU. I am the senior academician, Dr. Professor Charles General Chaplin. Usihulu, a warrior. Like it's like two you are seeing, it talks about the topic which we are going to treat today, parents, child relationship and strong bondings. Yes, and you can see my name there. Slide three now talks about the parents, child relationship is one that nurtures the physical, emotional, and social development of the child. This is a unique bond that every child and parents will enjoy and nurture. It is also a relationship that lays the foundation for child's personality, life choices, and overall behavior. Proverb 22, verse 6 says, if we train up children in the way they should go, even when they are old, they will not turn it down. You go to slide four, it also tells us that the ability to help a child succeed by the undermation is what is called good parent-child relationship. One, we have to have clear direction. Let them know where we are heading to. Let it be clear to them. Let us not make them to, to be confused. We need to set boundaries 
as you got what there are limits, what they need to do. The time to do this and the time to do that. Set it for a no. Three, offering opportunity to choose and to negotiate. You don't need to thumb something to them. No, give them choice. You need to allow them for negotiation. You don't just stand like a rambo stamp to this. No, it will be very wrong. And also, as far as their adults, you look at their age, you treat them based on their age, allow them to choose. Where they are going wrong, you try to correct them. Accommodating individual learning style needs. You accommodate them based on what you have been able to impart into them. You don't just give them instruction or tell them to do this. You look at their age. Also, you also look at giving opportunity to, to self-manage and stay in in the present time, you look at the prayers they are, you're able to give them what they sh should know, what they need to know, so as to help them as a child, as a, as a, child, as a parent. Also, we have the types of parents. Slide five talks about types of parents, child relationship. We have authoritarian, parents enforce street rules. This is one way of communication, which is wrong. Authoritarian, you don't need to. Permissive rules. Yes, parent gives open communication. I prefer this. The child decides rather than parent giving directive. Yeah, the roles of parent is friendly. So that the child, by the time the child is being friendly at the initial, because you are friendly to them, they will grow up with that attitude. Before you know what they grow up, they will be friendly to everybody. Look at the third one, authoritative. No, rules are clearly set by parents. You must follow these rules. If you don't follow, no, this is wrong too. Neglectful. Parents with neglecting their work, their duties. It's wrong. Why did you have them as a child, as a, as, as, as a parent? Yeah, kids mostly fed for themselves. What is wrong? This type of parental care is not good. I prefer that of a Permissive. Look at slide six. Responsibility of parents to their children. Slide six. Number one of it talks about pray for our children constantly. You pray for them. I mean, slide six. You pray for them. Teach them the way of God, the Lord, by molding faith and character in them. The next slide. The next slide. Three, be a living example of God. Be a living example of God to them. Train them in God's wisdom. Proverb 1, verse 8. Proverb 29, 29, verse 15. Discipline them in the same manner the Lord disciplines us. Ephesians 6, verse 4. Discipline them, follow the way. Five, parents are to love, show compassion, care for our children's emotional well-being. Love, show compassion, care. These are very vital. And to bring the child to a good reason, a good focus in life, and they will be useful to them and to the world entirely. We look at slide seven, family conflict and how to handle it. Family are not supposed to have conflicts, but when the conflict comes, how, what are, are you going to do? What are what you are going to do? I'm going to learn after we finish. Family is one of the greatest institutions that God has ever created. It was designed to be a systematic social construct that provide love, peace, creation, and healthy, interaction. A healthy family dynamic reflects the nature of God and provide mutual acceptance and compassion for the lowly. Our family should be honored, protected, and cherished. There have been conflict and challenges in the human family since the day of Adam and Eve. How then do we deal with these family conflicts. 
Slide eight will tell us, and slide nine and 10. Let us go to slide eight. Slide eight is telling us that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore, there is no perfect family. Romans 3, 23. No perfect family. All families experience a level of dysfunction. So this confusion, you must experience. We don't have perfect. It's only God that is perfect. That is why we need God in our life. So that we can achieve what we need to achieve. What he wants us to achieve, not what we need. What he wants us to achieve. If God doesn't want us to achieve, we will not achieve it. Most of the things we acquire, we achieve it because God wants us to achieve. Many want to achieve, but they cannot achieve. Not that we are better than them, but because of the grace of God. Number two, we should always love and prioritize our family. First Peter chapter four, verse eight. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Three, the ability to demonstrate temperament or temperance or and self-control is a sign of spiritual maturity. Therefore, let's manage our emotion. Always keep our emotion and behavior in check. If these are not kept in check, we see public commotion in the family. But we know every one of us, we know our emotion, we know our challenges, we know our faults. We should be able to manage it. We don't need to lure it over the other and therefore causing commotion. No, we should manage it and checkmate it and ask God to help us out. Number four, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you and you. It is God that can fight for no human being can fight for you. If you think that you have somebody to fight for, no way it's God who created us for us to know him, to serve him, to be happy with him in this world or the after, and to love him. Be selective on your approach to conflict resolution. Exodus 14.4. Therefore, choose your battle wisely. So when you are going into marriage or whatever, you want to create a family, choose it wisely. That's why you're asking God to help out. So no family should experience conflict because conflict is one of those things because we are not perfect. We should be able to manage ourselves. We should always communicate life we should always communicate life and not death. The time conflict comes, you are trying to spoil that family, destroy that family, which God has created, has made. You are trying to tell God you don't know what you are doing. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it should eat the fruit thereof. Effective communication is key in the family. Point six. Let's always master the act of listening in family. James chapter 1, verse 19. Act of listening. When husband and wife or the children don't listen to themselves, no, commotion will come. So that means the background is there is faulty there. Beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear and slow to speak. Slide 10 is telling the furtherance of it. God gave us two ears, two ears God has given us, one mouth and one mouth, because he wanted us to do twice the hearing with less the talking, James 1, 19. Number eight point, practice prayer and forgiveness in family. With forgiveness, you free yourself from bondage, Mark eleven twenty five. Families should protect their privacy. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Everyone should not have access to your private family matter. By the time that one comes, it causes conflict in the family. Uh, there will not be penetrating no one among the family, the family, mother, and children. So privacy is very important. Number 10, whereby you have tested all these areas, you now come and do what? Seek professional counseling and therapy if needed. Slide 11, the element of parent-child relationship. The element of parent-child relationship. Slide 11, slide 11. Let's go to slide 11. One, safety. Safety is at the core of bonding and self-regulation starts when a newborn infant needs are met. 
by his parents. A newborn baby, the needs are made by the parents. That's safety. Two, unconditional love, building of trust. How? When the parents are always available for the children, the children will now be looking at the parents. And what? That trust will be there. That's the love. Also, we look at mutual respect. Respect between parents, children should be reciprocal. Not because you are a parent, you feel that you should you will not respect your children. No. As your children respect you, you respect them too. It's two ways traffic or two ways area. Element of parents and child relationship. Acceptance. Accepting your child's limitation and helping them. Whatever your child is doing, you know to do what. That's why they are child. And what? You correct them, their limitation. You help them out. Number five, flexibility. Always accepting your, ch your child because tomorrow might be different from who he is today. But now you are helping the child. Perfection will not come, not your perfection, excellency. Before you know, the child will be changing before it becomes an adult. That's why our responsibility is very important. Slide 12, strong bondings. From what I have been expressing or saying, there is a strong bonding between parents and children. This make up your family. A bond between people is strong feeling of friendship, love, and shared belief and experiences that unite them. Creating the strongest bond is all about creating the open-minded space for people to be who they are instead of forcing them to be who to be who we want them to be. No, you don't force people to be what you know. You lure them, you nurture them, you try to help them out. You don't force them. Be open-minded. Know what they are doing, then you know how to correct them in love and in meekness, humble, humility. By the time you shout on them and correct them, you see that one day, one day, they will, be, they will tell it. A great relationship doesn't happen because of the love you had in the beginning. But how well you continue building that love until the end. We are, we are growing, every one of us, we keep on building it. That's the area we can nurture it, we can make it okay. By the time we fail, you love that person from inception, later you don't love that person because you are not building it. A lot of us to do with building, but you are building it until the end. When is the end? Maybe when we die, when God called us. We pray that God will going to help us and give us his grace to love one another, to be kind to each other. In my conclusion, which is like 13, a wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despairs his mother. I repeat again, conclusion, slide number 13. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despairs his mother. The next slide, slide 13, yes. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despairs his mother. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching that they should bind them upon their hearts forever. Their heart, all the teaching I wish should be in their heart. So that when you are talking, you are doing it, it will not come from your heart. Your expression, your doings will not come from your heart. Fasting them across your neck. When you walk, they will guide you, put them on your neck. When you sleep, when you are not sleeping, what do you do? They will watch over you. When you awake, when you are awake, they will speak for you. Look at that. Proverbs chapter 6, 20 to 22. We are expected to respect and honor our parents because of the strong bonding. Honoring is external and is a gift that is freely given as an act of reverence and value. Respect is based on an internal attitude of high regard towards someone of end and merited behavior. Parents should not provoke their children into anger, direct and nurture them in God's way because of the strong bonding. Slide 14, appreciation. Thanking God and appreciating IIU and all our team for this noble occasion. IIU 
the world first virtual interna international internship university is the change. IIU brings the change and IIU the revolution in the children's in the education system. Thank you, all our listeners and supporters. May God come to empower us as we continue to empower others. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Charles. It's an honor to have you here. You have a great presentation. Big applause for you. Thank you. All my respect and my admiration, and indeed the respect, it must be at the base at our roots to be the first level in our roots. Without respect, we can do nothing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now we have uh, Sandra, a great educationist from Portugal. Welcome, dear Sandra. I can't wait, we can wait to hear uh, your um, presentation. Okay, uh, thank you to this opportunity. I'm glad to take part of this project and um, I glad to uh, can talk today about this topic. I want to share my presentation. It's more small, <laughs> but um, just a moment. You can. I can share. Can. Uh, Ah. So it's okay. You can, okay. Uh you can see? Uh, I think it's another page but was open your presentation. Ah, okay. Just No, no rush. Okay, I can. We are not stressing this project. We must I make so much. So the topic for this session is parent-child relationship and strong bonding, and I choose this message for this session. It's difficult uh, sometimes educate resilient, positive, and happy children, but I think that most important is transmit the importance of self-discipline to grow up better. Because we don't always wake up motivated or have people or situations that motivate us to be a better person and have a good, good values. And uh, um, I, I have to... Uh, share with us some examples to instill uh, values in children, in our home or in society. I choose four. Um, respect rules in home or school or in society. Have quality, uh, quality family time. Tell always the truth and take responsibility. Then I select one video um, that are in this, uh, that show more examples to um, instigating children during all the education. I hope you can see and uh, listen. It's a small video.
<laughs> it's more examples and all that are important but um, is essential respect uh, the time to children learn to be a good person i think is the most important respect their time and teach they have uh, self discipline to be um, a good person have a, gr a great attitude during all life and uh, i finish my contribute to this session thank you for your attention and uh, it's me <laughs> i'm a teacher but also i'm a mother that. Thank you so much, my dear Sandra. Extraordinary, like usually, you are a great educator. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Thank uh, you. you you can stop share the screen, and I will present the next speaker in our session. Is uh, someone that I have trust. Uh, that I seen in her a uh, good leader, a future leader, Amudi Pesola Adeola, school leader, digital leadership evangelist, applied digital skill ambassador, Microsoft innovative educator expert from Nigeria. She's also part of Team IIU Nigeria. Welcome, my dear Sola. Uh, Sandra, I think you share your, I uh... know, oh, Sola. Okay, great. Okay, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Emre. I, okay. I really do appreciate you. You have been so encouraging. I mean, you've been showing me what a woman, what women should do to themselves. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so um, today, uh, the theme of today's project is uh, who. I am I. Sorry, I want to. Let me go to the team first. Is uh, who am I? So you see, I put the emoji. I'm thinking because this is a question we should all ask ourselves, and we should not be in a hurry to answer the question. We should give it a thought, and I'm sure we'll get our purpose in life if we do. So uh, we'll. Uh, I was talking on parent-child relationship and strong bonding. I'm grateful for this initiative of uh, IU, WEC, and IU Student Development Council. Thank you for this great initiative. So meet me and my children. My name is Shola Adiola Sojibra Amudipe. I'm a Nigerian, a proud Nigerian, and a school leader, a passionate educator, a digital citizenship um, ambassador, and you know, a, a mother to see this as still my parents. So, and my children, why is a uh, positive parent relationship important? Before we get there, sorry, I, I think I omitted something. I wanted to talk about uh, the theme, which is. Uh, parent-child relationship. You know, young children will grow with uh, their parents stand a better chance of developing happy and content relationship with others later in life. If we look at our society, you see children that have good parenting, uh, parents around them, those that invested in their children. You see how the children turn out to be. Some of us, if we tell you a story, Maybe one of our parents wasn't there. Maybe both parents were not there or they were there. They didn't give us the attention. You see uh, you see the results that is not a very good one. It's not what we want for ourselves. So why is a positive parent-child relationship important? Parenting style, we have different parenting styles. So I'll just run through why I feel this particular one being positive is important. Positive parenting uh, is one side fits all. As a mother, as a father, if we have that positive mindset that this, my children, I'm going to give them the best so that they turn out to be uh, a better adult in life. So it's one size, you consider it and you start doing it. However, some simple positive uh, parenting tips can help when it comes to your relationship with your child. The first one is uh, 
warm, loving interaction. We should always have warm and loving interaction with our children, set boundaries, rules, and consequences. Children do well when they know that, okay, this, I can't go beyond this, and there are rules, and you stay true to the rules yourself. And then for every rule you break, there are consequences. Listen and empathize with your child. Then uh, solve problems with your child. You don't just leave them to be on their own without caring or bothering about uh, how life is treating them. Okay? So having a bond with your kids is something money can't buy. Bonding with your kids is something that money cannot buy. It's for the good of the children, number one. Then it's for the good of parents, number two. I would say that number three is also for the good of prayer because when those children eventually grow up, they will always come back because they have a bond with their parent. But if they, if you don't work on, if you're not intentional about creating this bond, so it means that when they grow and they leave you, they won't even find it difficult. They won't even be missing anything because there's no connection. There's nothing apart from one just being their parent and they see it as a, uh, responsibility i just have to be responsible for my parent take care of them there's no friendship there's nothing so how do we strengthen the parent child relationship number one tell your child you love them all the time you see my daughter if you if you see my daughter and you if if you ask her who is the most beautiful girl in the old world she will tell you she's the one because that's what i tell her all the time if you ask her are you sure your mother loves you she will tell you that in this whole world, the person that loves her the most is her mother. And I have been telling her that, I've been telling them when they were quite younger and they, they, are, they are a bit grown, they have that, nobody can take that away. I'm creating that bond. And now they're in the body now. So every, almost every time she's calling through the aspirin number, mommy, I'm missing you, I just want to hear your voice. Mommy, you're not sounding well, are you sure you're okay? So when you tell them you love them, they look out for you, they love you in return. Then play together. Your children should be your friend. That's another way of strengthening the parent-child relationship, building the bond. Play together, they should be your friend. Like I said, I was using my daughter as a case study. She'll tell you that I'm my mom's friend, my mom is my best friend. Even when they are writing composition about their best friend, they are writing me as, they, they mention me as their best friend. Because we play together, we relate together, and there's virtually nothing they don't know. Things that they can relate with, they know about me. Then uh, be available. Yes, we are all, most of us are busy now in the economy. We are trying to make ends mean, meet, running up and down. But we should uh, be available for our children, create time, so that when they want to ask questions, they know that, okay, I have someone I can talk to. When they are bothered about issues, you're the first contact, the first person they want to talk to. That's a way of creating a bond with your children. Eat meals together, eat together. It's also strengthening the relationship. Listen and empathize. Spend one-on-one -on -one time with children. May, you know, you're, maybe you have more than one. Spend one-on-one, -on -one. have, you know, time with them, separately them together so that, I mean, this one might want to share something that doesn't want the other to know. You know, they have the time to discuss that with you and everybody will be good at the end of the day. Turn off the technology when you both are together. When you're with your children, courtesy demands that even when I'm talking to someone, I shouldn't be on my phone or my or my, my devices. You know, I should give, give the person attention. The same thing to our children. We show them respect, which we even, we, we, we emulate some of these things we want them, I mean, we, we play it, we model some of these things we want them to do, we do it to them. So when, when they're talking to me, I am not with my devices, I'm, I'm off any devices, I'm paying attention. They also do the same thing to me. They also go on and do that to other people. And that way we are also building uh, the bond with our children. Be a role model, to, role model to them. What we want them to do is what we should model to them, not, some some people will say practice what I say and not what I do. It shouldn't be like that with our children because they are watching our every move. They they are even seeing us. They want to be like us. So we should be a role model to them. That way we're also building the bond. Have a healthy relationship with your partner. 
So with your spouse, you have a healthy relationship. They are seeing everything. They see that our home is blessed. We are, we are happy family. You know, they, they always look forward to coming to that happy place, that which is the home. So it builds the bond with you and your children. Then it gets involved in the hobby of your child, not just the hobby, even the academics, everything that has to do with your child. Get to be part of it. Know what they like, their color, best color, what they don't like doing, what they need help to get, and all of that. It builds uh, the bond with the children. So I, I think at this point, I'd like to draw the curtain. Thank you very much once again, Emmy. Thank you, IIU. Thank you, everyone, for listening. My name is Shola Adiola at Sojibra. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Shola. Extraordinary life, usually great. Great presentation, great presentation. Thank you for your presence today with us. And we'll wait Thank you in uh, 8 February. Yeah. Uh, the next speaker, and is a great speaker, Mia Meden from South Africa, is an international lecturer and specialist, global speaker, honorary professor of education, IIU. Welcome, Mia Meden. Thank you so much, my dear sister. Um, firstly, let me say a universal greeting of peace and blessings to everyone across the world, wherever you are. Um, thank you to IIU, especially our dear Sir Piyush Pandit for this amazing platform that he always gives us to provide this education where we learn from each other and we also give whatever we have to each other. Um, and thank you to you as well, my dear sister Amina. You're fantastic at being this moderator. I give recognition to every esteemed speaker and of course, Professor Charles, always lovely to hear you and gain wisdom from you too. Thank you, sir. Today's topic is really very close and the project, who am I? Um, I think Sister Sola, you just said it to perfection. It's not a quick question to answer. Um, and I loved her approach in her speech because everything that she spoke about resonated with her in her personality as a mother. Um, and, and I think it's so important that when we speak, we speak from the heart, but we speak from our life's experience because it is humane for us to learn from the next person. It is like it is humane for us to do the gossip on somebody's life or story, which we shouldn't be doing, but it is humane for us to do. It's the best way to get a point forward and across to somebody for them to learn what your message is. And today's topic about parent-child relationship and the strong bond between that is crucial. It's crucial not just for us on this platform, but it's crucial for the answer to the question of who am I? So when you look at this title that we've got for today's platform, which says parent-child relationship and strong bonding, each word, each word broken down has got some form of connotation on its own with the meaning before you link it into the entire meaning of the context of today's topic. So when you talk of parent, parent is a role. Parent is a person. Parent is an individual. Child, same. Child is a role. Child is a person with their own individuality. Relationship, what does this concept mean to you? Not just you as a parent or you as a child or you as an educator, what does relationship mean? The word strong, we could have just said relationships and bonding between, between parent and child, but we said strong, strong defining what? And when we talk of bonding, what exactly are we referring to? If we can answer these in their own categorized conceptualized state, then we will answer the question of who am I in the role of the parent and who am I in the role of a child? Because the one thing we have to know is you as a parent who is listening to us, you were once that child. You were once a child in your cycle. And if you as a parent sit down now and look back to your life as a child, you ask yourself, what was your relationship like with your parent? What was your relationship and bond like with your parent? And what would you have changed for yourself 
as the child that you were then in that relationship with your parent. And then ask yourself, as the parent that you are today, what would you like to change in your parenting style with your child, which you did not approve of as you were growing up? But note that I did not say that you must insist on certain circumstances where your child has to outlive what you started and didn't fulfill through. Your child is not here to fulfill your dream as a parent or to do what you did not do as a child. Your child is here in their own individual capacity. So I ask you then as a parent right now, what exactly is your relationship with your child? And I ask you as the child who's listening to me, what is your relationship with your parent right now? Do you even have a relationship with your child? Do you have a relationship with your parent? Because I know of many cases where parents think they have a relationship with their child. A child assumes they have a relationship with their parent. But when they come to the crux of understanding what relationship between parent and child means, what does it encompass, they suddenly realize, oh my word, we actually don't know each other. That is the case of reality in many a household today. The parent and the child are so fragmentized that the parent only knows about the child what the child allows the parent to know. And the child only knows what the parent allows the child to know. Yet, the parent does not recognize this child is sponging off everything from you. Your negatives and your positives, and this child is not getting from you the attention that is needed for them to process what is negative and what is positive. They have to need to process this on their own. What does this do for their intellectual capacity? What does it do for their personality as they're growing up and their character traits? Where are they gonna get it from? Then we come to bonding. What kind of bond do you have with your child? Do you have a telepathic one? Were you sitting in your office and you suddenly feel the sense that, oh my gosh, something's happened with my child. Or where your child is at school and suddenly feels, wait, I'm feeling the sense that something's wrong with my mom. Sometimes parents and children have that. But if you don't have that, it doesn't mean you don't have a bond. Bond is when you are able to relate. Bond is when you feel the sense of something is amiss. Like when my child went out, I missed her. I missed the sense of her voice, which I know normally lingers throughout the house for that few hours that she was with me. But the point is, this is how the bonds are developed. That missing, that yearning, that empty space that is only filled, guess what? This has to be where you start your framing of your bonding with your parent and with your child. Because here's what happens. There's a rat race of life right now. Every parent is trying to make ends meet, whether you are a single parent or whether you are a couple as parents with children. You have this rat race going on. Most households in the universe today have got both parents working, coming in at odd hours. Parents are not with their children. The children are spending more time at schools with educators, at daycare centers with caregivers, and then come home when parents are so exhausted to even answer a simple question from a child. Your child will come home and is so excited to see you because they have not seen you the entire day. They have felt this missing of the parent. But you as the parent are coming home totally exhausted from your day of whatever was thrown at you because you had to make that end meet. And you got home and there's this little one who suddenly has a million questions and wants to tell you all the stories about the day. And what do you do as a parent in your frustration of what you are bringing forth from work? You say to the child, just not now, okay? I'm tired, maybe later. What does that do to the mindset of this child? Does it even create the bond? Does it create a relationship? Because guess what happens? This child is not looking for your money. You came from a space where you're getting paid for your time. But this child is wanting a little bit of your time which money will not buy like the previous speaker said. This child needs your time, your love, your attention, your understanding. And those things, money, 
cannot buy. So nowadays what's happening is our children are starting to look for these fillers for the gaps that they feel in the spaces that they left in, which is a school. So it's either an educator or the friend and God forbid the wrong friend, or it's the caregiver or it's the nanny. And then you as a parent want to at one point question and say, why does my child open up to strangers and not to me? How often is it that when we're having parent meetings at schools, for example, parents will come to the school meeting, the teacher will say to this child, to the parent, this child is having difficulties with this. I need your help to help this child. I'm not sure about this grade. The parent will turn around to the teacher and say, well, my child is supposed to be an A grade student. I don't know what you're doing wrong. Now, all of a sudden, the grades of the child is not the responsibility of the parent. The behavior of the children are not responsibilities of the parent. So what exactly are parental responsibilities then? Because the teachers are not supposed to be doing that. The ethics of your child doesn't come from your teacher. The behavioral patterns do not stem from your scholastic environment. That has to start from you in your home. You cannot be blaming others for your wrong parental behavior. And you cannot blame others for your child's wrong behaviors either. So are you as a parent right now able to define who are you in terms of being the parent to the child? I want to give a quick um, example of something that happened in my experience two years ago. I had a child who was brought to me. He was a matriculant. And he needed counseling desperately. And I thought, well, COVID had just kind of happened, it's still here. We need to have counseling for this matriculant. Of course, at that year in his life, everything is supposed to be perfect, right? He's supposed to be only focusing on getting the best result to get into university to become the doctor he wants to become. So I start counseling this child. Fast forward to the entire counseling and therapy sessions. This child had to come for therapy and counseling because he lost who he felt was the most important, important person in his life. Who was that? To COVID. Who was that? Not any of his parents, not any of his siblings, his teacher. The teacher that gave him time from grade six to grade 12. The teacher that saw his potential and kept pushing him. The teacher who used to sit with him till he, because the parent was running late to pick him up all the time. That child lost that teacher to COVID and became suicidal because of it, because he could not fathom how to function. How must I function when my right-hand person is not here anymore? And I lost this person to what I don't even understand. What is this COVID? Why is it taking away what I love? Because two weeks prior to losing that teacher, he lost his best friend. Again, somebody outside of his family circle. This is a matriculant who has his whole life ahead of him and he's sitting there wanting to rather die because of loss of an educator and loss of a friend. Both people outside of his family, outside of his bloodline, but who gave him time, understanding and their energy and effort. So then I ask you based on this scenario, Today, of course, I'm grateful. The child is now third year on campus. He's happy, he's okay. They've mended their relationship with their family due to therapy, et cetera. But why do we have to wait to get to that point to really understand that our children need us as parents? And we as parents need that from our children. Let us not get to those stages where we have to get therapists to tell us we need to be more in tune with our children. And let us not wait for therapists to tell our children Get in tune with your parent. They actually do love you. We don't need this. We need to be able to know what is this parent-child relationship? What does it mean? Redefine it for ourselves because it has to work in our home and understand what is it to have a bond with your parent? What is it to have a bond with your child? Because there's no textbook. And I can tell you this safely from all of my studies and every other person on this panel and every other person in the world will tell you, there's no one textbook that's going to define that for you, that works best for you. 
every family home, every parent-child relationship, every parent-child bond is going to differ. Your circumstances will make it differ. And only you know how to define then what that needs to be to work for you. So I would like to leave it at that as a conclusion and thank IU again. Thank you so much, Sister Mina. And um, thank you so much to the esteemed speakers. And I hope today's session and something I said would have resonated with someone or some parent or child for that matter to make that positive change so that they can bond better and build better relationships with their families first before they do it outside the home. Thank you so much and God bless everyone. Thank you so much, my dear Mia. You are a treasure. Great speech. Great speech, like always. Bravo. Bravo. From your soul. And this is important. We talk here about soul. We don't have just theory, theory, theory. We try to change. This means a leader. For this is our purpose in life to create future leaders, to create healthy future leaders. And we fight for them mental health is, is so important. And now I want to announce uh, the next speaker, Adilpu Olwatrusina Bagail Diana, is the country director of United Kingdom IIU Women Entrepreneurs Council. Diana, are you there? Yes. Welcome, okay. Diana. Yeah, thank you very much, Madam Every. Thank you, everybody. A very lovely afternoon from there. Um, thank you, Haya, you for this platform. You know, to be able to better express ourselves and uh, opinion, and to be able to share idea. Very grateful. Um, without taking much of um our time, the topic parent-child relationship and bonding. You know, a lot of speakers have said it all. Just what you said. Uh, we need to understand that parent-child relationship is a unique work that nurtures the holistic growth and development of a child. You know, it goes beyond, <clears throat> we need to tell ourselves, we need to orientate ourselves on really what parent-child relationship means and how it can, it can affect the society because your charity begins at home. Whatever you have, that is what you can use to impact other people. You can use to impact the society. You know, that is where the first societal impact comes from, from the family. So without taking much of our time, uh, we just need to brush through majority, although Madam Shola in Nigeria, she has said basically a lot of all these points, you know, but I will just brush through one or two you know, advantages of building this relationship, you know, the advantages to things, you know, and as the advantages, there are disadvantages to them. So uh, my first point here, happy and content relationship, which has it that this, um, this set of people, you know, they have this confidence, confidence has been reaffirmed Opportunity, you know, they don't have self esteem. Relate with other people, you know, to better express themselves and, uh, you know, with their peers, with people higher than them. Um, my second point it helps to promote a child cognitive, emotional, and um, social development. The first point we explained it serves as a prerequisite for. Um, the healthy development of um, the brain of a child, you know, it builds their confidence, you know. Um, strong bond in the home helps family resolve conflicts easily, you know, whereby, you know, um, if they feel not good about something, you know, they have access to their parents. They can easily call out their parents, oh, I'm not strong bond in the family, thereby promoting teamwork. <clears throat> and we all know the value of what team can lead to or what it amounts to, either in the home or in the society. Individual reach their potential peak because at that particular point, they have encouragement, they have people that support them, you know, so it is very easy to detect a trait in them and say, oh, I think you have this talent, I think you are good at this, you know, they have people to talk to, they have people that can put them through, you know, in that space. They rarely fall into depression. 
you know, they have people to talk to, just to portray the first one. <laughs> they, they have people to talk with, you know, um, their parents, you know, being the time created for them, you know, so they can detect if you know, anything is going wrong or something, you know, and these people in turn, they give them more time, they can open up the issues in church. Problem with connection, we're not sure so good. Am, am I more audible now? Yes, more audible, yes. Perfect. Thank you for that. Okay, tips to having a strong relationship, like building a child, um, you know, building um, the bond, parent-child um, bonding, you know, firstly, it's constant reaffirmation. You have to keep reaffirming with them. I love you, you know, or my important to me. You know, I care about you. You are my priority and the likes like that. I appreciate any little efforts or any need, you know, to learn to say, you know. Sweetheart, thank you. Oh, I appreciate any of their little gestures. Making positive remarks and comments just to buttress the um, second point, you know, avoid them in any of their pursuit. Specialization. Try to em embrace and learn to love what they enjoy and love. You. you know, try to enjoy, engage yourself in what they love and use to build a relationship. Creating family traditions and um, rituals, you know, um, you can maybe at, when during the weekend, you know, you can take them out, make it a tradition, you know, in that regard, you can build more bone. Eating meals together, you know, give them attention. When you, enga when you engage them, you know, on a session or a conversation, try as much as possible to give them your attention. Don't have, don't let your attention be divided. You know, try to engage them in LD conversation, try to understand what they are going through, how their activities in school is, you know, their friends, try to understand who do they work with, you know, assist in building the um, <clears throat> parent-child relationship. All in all, in my first um, um, intro, I said in everything that has, uh, that there is positivity, there's also negativity. So I'm going to round up by saying, all in all, everything in life should have its limits. Everything excess is bad, and thereby has its, has its own disadvantage. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, my dear country director of Women Entrepreneurs Council. Thank you, dear Diana. Thank you, great speech, thank you. And now I want to invite a, a great friend, uh, is a, she's a leader, a great educationist, and she is the country director, IIO country director of Zimbabwe, Patricia Gonde. Welcome, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ermina. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening to you all. I hope I'm audible. Very audible, always. Uh, okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all viewers and participants across the globe. And I would like to acknowledge um, Sir Piyush Pandit Sir, um, the founder of IIU, Dr. Roshni Lai also, and uh, our country director, our vice chancellor, country, uh, our vice chancellor, Sir uh, Charles Eboria. And then um, the topic here that we are talking about is on uh, parent-child bonding. This is an important relationship, which if not done correctly, leads to so many problems in life. I know that uh, when we give birth to children, we do that out of love. When we adopt children, we do that out of love. We need to love our children always. This relationship uh, of parent and child is the one that lays that foundation for the child's personality, for the child's behavior, and sometimes for the child's choices in life. And as parents, we always want, always want uh, the best for our children. Uh, we, so it means that we definitely need an environment, a positive parent-child relationship, which values um, when a child is brought into this earth, this is a, it is a unique bond 
are made from pure love that every child and parent has. Then this bonding is the one that builds a strong relationship between a parent and the child. And as a result, research has shown that children from such a relationship, where there's positive parenting, the children um, grow with a secure and healthy attachment to their parents. And also the children also in life they will stand an even better chance of developing a healthy, happy, fulfilling relationship themselves with others in life, because this one has got a ripple effect. And also the importance of it is that that foundation of better social, academic, emotional skills that are laid out from a healthy parental involvement um, and intervention in our children's day to day to life is going to help them in their lives. Are we doing that as parents? Do we involve in our children's lives? Nowadays, for example, here in Zimbabwe, there's a story that's trending on drug abuse, whereby a top school here in Harare has sent eight children dismissed, and these were prefects on a camp. They have been dismissed from the school. Why? Because of drug mm -hmm. abuse. But these children were coming from home, going for the camp. Do we even do those spot checks uh, or even talk to our children on the importance or the um, being uh, as a prefect? They were supposed to be counseled before they even went for a camp. Their parents didn't even notice that the children had drugs in their satchels, in their beds. I know that sometimes they are adults, we don't check, but talking to them, we are having so many problems of abuse, sexual abuse. Why? Because the children do not have anyone to talk to. They have those problems. Let's love our children because that healthy relationship with the child is the one that is going to help the child in future. If you do not witness, sometimes I've seen that as a teacher, I've always said that sometimes as a teacher myself, I've seen parents not coming up for events for their children. It can be cross country, it can be athletics, it can be something that the child is participating. And some parents do come. How do you think that your child is going to, to feel? Because the parents are busy at work. So if you do not witness your child's success, then who's going to do it? When are you going to do it? At your child's deathbed or at a child's hospital bed? Because we have some children who have committed suicide even at an early age, six, seven years old, 12 years old. I am in a group whereby every day we are hearing stories that so and so a child committed suicide. Maybe it's because that parental child bonding, that relationship is not there. Maybe someone did not listen to that child up to an extent that the child commits suicide. It sounds very unrealistic, but it has happened. And we have canceled a lot of children in our schools because their parents never pitch up. I know that last time there was a girl in my school uh, staying with a father and a stepmom, and she was a prefect. And the mom was saying, stepmom, wow, did she deserve being a prefect? And they never even picked up. And she was in tears and we had to stand in for the parents. So this leads to stress, it leads to hate, it leads to depression and a lot of unanswered uh, un questions. Unfortunately, us as teachers have been left to deal with it. And I'm happy we gladly do it, but it has effects on your child's social and emotional development. And it affects the child's self-esteem and confidence. And it also affects his or her grades at school. So as parents, we have to build and maintain healthy relationship with our child because this secure attachment leads to healthy social, emotional, cognitive, and uh, motivational development. Many of us, yes, we communicate with our children. Many, our many a time, our children sometimes do not confide in us because we don't listen to them. We are not available for them. So what happens when we do not listen to our children? they go and confide in a stranger. They go and confide with a domestic worker or your maid. 
and let's communicate with our children. Let's have that eye connect. Let's have that. Uh, some children have never seen their parents or uh, their mom or dad uh, talking to each other mutually, but fighting in that domestic violence. And what are you going? To, what are you teaching your child? Because it it will also happen to them in life. They think that domestic violence is the way to go because mom and dad were doing it in front of them each and every day. So let's appreciate our child. Let's smile and appreciate God's gift to us. Uh, be warm and interaction with them. And our children, sometimes they need guidance from us as parents and <laughs> to be what we didn't manage to be in life. For example, you have to be a doctor because you have to be an engineer. Let's talk to them, guidance. Let them choose what they want, but you guide them. Sometimes you need those boundaries here and there. So whenever we are guiding, we also have boundaries and rules within which they operate. If you tell them that, for example, this is homework time, this is uh, bed time, let's stick to that. Let's not say, oh, today you can watch TV. Let's have those uh, boundaries. And our children need these structures as they grow up. And when you say, I love, I love you as a child, it's only a three-letter word, mean it. And when you say it, and have that unconditional love. And then let's develop a big ear and also eyes to notice what, notice what is happening in our children as they grow up, empathize with them because they also face those um, uh, problems in life. You don't know what is happening in school. You don't know what is happening in the bus when they are going to school. You don't know what is happening at preschool. So reassure them and tell them that you love them. Otherwise, someone is going to say that to your child, especially teens. Someone is going to tell them that I love you and you won't even be able to control when that starts happening. So let's watch closely our children. Uh, do not be surprised. Maybe one day your child is coming to tell you that so and so, mom, I've got a stomachache, and then you discover that your child is pregnant. Let's try to make sure that we, we also be involved. And lastly, be available to children. Uh, otherwise, Facebook will be available for them. Instagram will be available for them. Snapchat and all those apps that you can think of because mom and dad are not there. They are busy at work. So I have that time where, where I know some speakers spoke about it. Pray together, play together, eat together, read together daily. Especially those children in the elementary school, we encourage our parents to read to their children, not for them to listen to their child. They also want to hear you read to them. Uh, cycle together, travel together, bonding, and let's be available for our children. Even 20 minutes a day means quite a lot. That quality time, sometimes it's not quantity. So some parents uh, discover their children's wayward behavior when they only, because of lockdown, because of COVID, they didn't know. But that is the time that we're given by God to be with our families. And that's when they discovered that their child had learning difficulties. Some even parents discovered that their children are on drugs. Some discovered that their children on a uh, drug addict. Some had uh, doubts uh, with, on their children's behavior. But then they noticed that their children were well behaved. So let's have that time to, uh, with uh, our children together. Uh, let's have quality time. Quality individual time with our children can help strengthen our bonds. It builds and maintains child-parental relationships. Never, never underestimate the power of parent-child relationship because it is going to, um, to make sure that your child uh, grows to be a responsible adult. That relationship is the one that will shape how your child is going to perceive the world, how your child is going to see the world. And we know that our children are better able to cope in the normal struggles of life because of the foundation that we give them. So let's be a role model. And um, for your child, if you tell them that don't lie, and then the next minute you are telling your child that if dad comes, please don't tell him that. Or please don't tell your mom this. Do as I do, I think is the only way to get to go. Thank you so much, I, I, you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, my friend Ermina, for giving me this opportunity to share just a few words with you.
Thank Over you. to you, Emina. Thank you, my great friend. Thank you so much. Extraordinary. You rock. You all rock today. You are great. We are a great team. And now, because we don't have time, I think uh, three minutes, four minutes, Esther, you can manage. Uh, will come a great speaker, a parenting coach and soft skill trainer, Esther Mala from Malaysia. Happy so much, weekend, Patrick. dear speakers and uh, dear audience. Today's topic is parent-child relationship and strong bonding. Without wasting any more time, let me dive in straight away to the topic and I have to skip a few because the time is short. Other speakers have taken. Great speakers. We have great speakers today. I'm sure you know my name. Okay, fine. Parent-child relationship and strong bonding. The parent-child relationship is a very unique relationship. It is the strongest bond in the world because parents and child, especially mother and child, has close bonding because of the biological relationship. This is the best relationship, which is rooted in unconditional and unconditional love and understanding between both of them. Parents provide support, guidance, and protection for their children. Parent-child relationship. Parents are the first people who influence their children and teach them about life. And the bond that is created between them is something which lasts for a lifetime. Conscious parents or positive parents or allied parenting is all about remaining calm and respectful to your children while simultaneously enforcing the rules of conduct you wish to maintain within your home. Instead of punishing your children for bad behavior, Positive discipline techniques are designed to teach, model, and encourage positive behavior. Teach your child and provide support, guidance, and protection. How to establish parent-child relationship and strong bonding? I will go through very fast because this all been covered by other speakers and due to lack of time. Spend quality time with your child. Listen to your child. Show affection to your child. If you have any questions, any doubts, please, please put in the chat box or comments. Be good role model. Show interest in their interests, whatever they are interested in. Talk about your feelings to them. Respect your child's autonomy. This means give them the freedom to make their choice. Communicate with your child. Spend quality time together. Show affection. Praise and encourage them. Be consistent. If you tell something to them, you set a rule, make sure that you follow. Be available when they need you. Listen to them. Talk about your feelings so that your child will understand you better. Let's go into Parents' negative behavior. As you see here, there are so many elements which can destroy your relationship with your child, no matter whatever age they are. Factors which destroy parent-child relationship, lack of communication. You have no time for your child or always you tell them, I'll see you later, I'll talk to you later or you are not engaging in active communication with your child. Lack of respect for your child. You treat your child like uh, your child is nobody. You have to treat your child like an adult. If you promise, keep your promise, yeah? Talk to your child with respect, like how you want your child to respect you because children do what they see, not what you tell them. 
lack of boundaries, excessive criticism, keep on condemning them, uh, putting them to shame before their friends, your, your other siblings, abuse, um, maybe emotional abuse, physical abuse, conflict, unmet expectation. You are not providing or attending to your child's expectation. Most of the times the parents don't know what is the child's expectation because they have no time to talk to them. Parental neglect. Yeah, parents, most of them, they don't know how to be a good parent, positive parent, a conscious parent, a parent who understands how to be a good, good parent and how to, how to understand the child's emotion. Because no parents go to school or take up any courses before they become parents. So I suggest parents learn about parenting if you care for your children. Deferring values. Maybe there's a lot of disagreement. Yeah, got to handle it very, very carefully. Otherwise, you will lose your child's relationship, your child's attention, your child's uh, relationship with you. Uh, maybe your child will become rebellious. Inadequate discipline. If you don't discipline your child, then your child will discipline you. Thank you. Thank you, my dearest Esther. Thank you. Sorry, Please. I was really very fast. Uh, yes, next time. Uh, 20 minutes plus. It's okay? You will forgive me? <laughs> but am I in or not? Or the thing stop already, video? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Esther. Great, excellent. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. God bless you all. I hope no, you uh, feel good with us. Ermina, I think yes. next time you got to inform all the Yes, uh, next time we will need two hour, two hour and a half for sure. Or See, I don't know. I don't know whether I'm in the video okay. or not. Yes. I prepared uh, everything. Yes. Thank you all yeah. for joining us today. God bless you all. I hope you feel good with us. You're free. You are universe. You don't have an end. You don't have limits. Any idea about I'm yourself free. appears inside you. And, Ermina, uh, yes. I'm not in. If I'm not in at least um, three quarter of it or what, I feel very disappointed because I spent my time to prepare, exactly. you know, and I waited so long. Exactly. If I'm not in, please next time uh, inform them at the beginning. If you want to take more than the time allocated, we will yes. stop. Okay. Because Thank there's you. no respect for other speakers. It's not yes. fair. We right? are here respectful people. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay, you, you, let's end in a, in a joyful... Sorry, yeah. Sorry for those uh, who don't like what I say. Please forgive me. But I Thank think you. we have to respect the time of All others. All people respect. All people respect yeah. here yeah. in the project. Thank you so much, Esther. Thank you so um, much. You are free. You are universe. You don't have uh, an end. You don't have limits. Any idea about yourself appears inside you and uh, you will disappear all inside you. You are the attention, and the attention is the consciousness. Rest in the infinite peace of your own nature before and throughout of uh, the arises. And now let's end this beautiful moment with the riff of a cheerful song of a great musician born in the Indian city of Bangalore, Joel Benson, a story to fly here in Who Am I project. Thank you to all of you. Let's hear this song and end this session. Thank you so much. Next time we will have time uh, for question. We will talk more. And uh, Esther will have um, 10 minutes right. uh, more. Yes, it's I understand right. you and I know that you prepared and you are always and you was with us uh, in this project. Yeah, yeah, I'll be with you, no problem. You know, because uh, okay. anyway, thank you to all the speakers. They are all so wonderful. And uh, most of you have covered the topic which I wanted to speak, so it's okay. That's why I cut short. And I went, I think I went to the um, the points which will destroy the relationship. I think that was my emphasis. 
Actually, there's a lot. This topic but you can is... insert in the next presentation. Next. You can insert. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can. Let insert. me see the video. How much I've been in. Yes, <laughs> let's dance a little. Let's uh, end this session uh, with so much joy because we are a team, a great team here, yes. full yes. of joyness. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great speeches so today. Much. All my respect, yes. and I admire you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amina. God bless you all. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Always mm -hmm. a pleasure and thank you for your blessing, our yeah, dear Vice Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Amy. Thank, thank you, you, all the speakers. I really do appreciate uh, uh, thank, thank, you. thank you, madam. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Great, great session today. Uh, thank, thank you. Great friends. We are all friends here. We are all friends. And this is uh, important. We are from different corner of the world. But we are here exactly. in this different project because we create the leader from tomorrow. And now let's dance. Good one. Yes. Good night. Good night. I hope I will share the sound. Yes. <laughs>
let's fly together. Let's fly together because I think you think like me. I are you is the change. I are you bring the change. Yes, you Charles. Yes, team. I are you is the revolution. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Exactly. Love you all. Exactly. God bless you. And not Good forget one. our soul is the house of divinity. And Thank not you forget. All. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good bye. Night. Bye. Bye. Bye.